Welcome to the Right of the People, to Key and Bear Arms Podcast. We cover Second Amendment news that matters to you, to me, and America. Join us as we delve into firearm education, firearm training, and firearm safety. The latest constitutional infringements, concealed carry issues, and the legislative process. Follow along as we follow new gun bills and new gun control laws that affect you. Subscribe today and never miss an episode. Hello, 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 friends. Hello, fellow North Carolinians and uh, the rest of the United States. <laughs> we are sure happy to be with you today here on this first episode right here. So let's go ahead and welcome you. Welcome to the Right of the People to Bear and Keep Arms podcast. I am your host, Kevin Thompson with Christian Second Amendment Association. And you can go on and find us over there on Facebook. Uh, our website's still in development. We're still uh, trying to get all the kinks worked out behind the scenes, but that's coming soon. And this is our freshly launched podcast here, and we do appreciate you tuning in today. Today's going to be a little bit of a short episode there. Um, and we're out here, and actually, we're actually in California today, so. Uh, we're actually uh, trying to pre-record this, and uh, let me go ahead and apologize. I have a little bit of background noise in the location that I'm in. Uh, there's a television going off in the background, so we're going to try to filter that out. But if you do hear it, just uh, pay it no mind there. And uh, today we're going to be talking uh, about a few issues. Like I said, it's going to be a little short, uh, but uh, we're going to be addressing House Bill 652 and this is in the uh, NC General Assembly, and this really affects the ones that's in the state of North Carolina. Uh, this is not a federal bill, this is a state bill, and it was introduced originally back in 2019, uh, and it's in the 2019 and 2020 session. And the report uh, on it really is this. This is the rundown. Uh, you know, it passed almost unanimously it passed and it tells how many uh how many votes that was was cast uh when it when it originally passed it was uh the eyes was 67 and the nose was 47 and of course we know who the 47 was the old democrats but uh in total 114 votes and there was six absentee or excused ballots and but it passed so it passed there and that's the history on that and so but on 7 8 2020 um uh, it was actually um they they come uh to uh address the override uh the veto override and governor roy cooper even though it passed with the uh you know 67 to 47 there in the house and went on to the senate uh and it was actually getting ready to become law but governor roy cooper of the state of north carolina actually vetoed this bill and that put a uh, a hold on everything so they had to reschedule a, a committee hearing and uh they basically re basically took a vote on it to basically override uh it's called a veto override and that's exactly what they was trying to do and this is the bill if y'all not familiar with it let me just uh let me just uh tell i'll tell you here the the wording of the filing and that is uh the act to reserve the constitutional uh the constitutional carry and uh of you know a per any persons that has a concealed carry let me get right here i've got to get it pulled up on my end i'm sorry i thought i had it pulled up but uh that's what happens when you're live <laughs> but uh what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to actually looking at the bill uh 
and Governor Roy Cooper is what he said uh, according to him and his veto. So I've got it pulled up now. I apologize. I should have had that. But in case you don't know, we're going to read the bill. Uh, not in its, uh, you know, not in the fullness of it, but, uh, you know, the most important bits. But House Bill 652, and this is, this is the actual bill, an act to provide that a person who has a concealed carry handgun permit may carry a handgun on educational property that is located on both a school and a place of worship, excuse me, religious worship, and to enact the Sackett Amendment Protection Act of 2020. Now, we can clearly see it doesn't take no literary genius or it don't even take somebody that knows how to read very well to look at that language and see we're not talking about public schools, we're not talking about uh, colleges, we're not talking about community colleges, we're not talking about any of the secular or any of the public, we'll put it that way, uh, schools. It is only concerning houses of worship, meaning religious establishments or religious places of worship. In other words, layman's terms, churches that has educational facilities attached to them are on the same property or premises. And right now, uh, you can't do it. And it's all because of the Democrats that had introduced it. And a lot of you don't maybe not even know this, but you cannot, as a concealed carry holder in the state of North Carolina, even though you have a valid concealed carry, you cannot just say, I'll give an instance. Uh, there's a large church by the name of Calvary Baptist in a place called King, North Carolina. And not only are they a church, but they're a school as well. So that's one instance as even on Sunday and even on Wednesday night, when you're in that facility or in that building, uh, as it's acting as a house of worship, or in other words, a church, has nothing to do with education or school or school-hosted events, uh, and certainly it's not public. Uh, but anyhow, the law prohibits you from con con concealed carrying in that facility uh, due to the, the way the law is wording. And this right here was the Second Amendment Protection Act of 2020 that was actually formally introduced in 2019. Uh, and I, I think it's a great bill. It's a much needed bill because I think that every church should be on level playing ground. Now, that's my personal opinion. You may differ, but let's listen to the language that was used by Governor Cooper. I don't even like to say Governor Cooper. I'm, I'm sorry just to say it, but it's just the truth. But he says, this is, and I quote, this bill allows gun on school property, which threatens the safety of students and teachers. Therefore, I veto this bill. So his language or his comeback, have you want to word that, um, is basically saying, okay, so we're talking about letting guns at school. Incorrect. The context, the very context of what Cooper is saying is not even accurate. We're not talking about school. We're talking about a church and a church only. And may I a actually bring this fact up? The actual bill says nothing. The language has nothing about during active school hours or even a school sponsorship. Uh, it's like an event that uh, the school is put on or promoting or something like that on that property. It's only trying to protect the individual right of the Second Amendment to carry in the house of worship when the house of worship is acting as a house of worship. In other words, your Sunday morning, your 11 a.m., your 10 a.m. Sunday school hour, your 11 a.m. Sunday school hour, your, uh, and y'all uh, don't pay a mind to that background noise. I had a big truck to pull up beside of me here, and so that's what you're hearing in the background, but the fundamental right as an individual to have your right protected, um, you know, you 
we we need this bill. This is a bill that we're going to have to try to, if you have any kind of interest in it, we're going to have to try to reintroduce it as soon as Roy Cooper's out of there. I believe Dan Forrest is a good candidate. Now, uh, I can't say a whole lot um, about Dan Forrest. I don't know him personally, but as following him and seeing what he stands on, what he says, his statements, uh, let's be honest. I mean, do we really, do we know, I mean, how much do we know about these politicians, honestly? Unless we know them personally or, or something of that nature, let's just be right honest. What do we really truly know about any politician or what they really truly believe or what they truly support? They say one thing in a lot of the cases, and they have a uh, difference of opinion behind the scenes. So with that being said, to my knowledge, you know, uh, Dan Forrest seems like the uh, he would make a great governor. I do know from his positions that he is pro 2A. Now, that's not to say there'd be somebody that between thou and then and now uh, of the day of this recording, which today is Thursday the 16th of 2020, um, who's to say a, a better candidate might not come along? But uh, at any rate, this... H -B, uh, HB, this House Bill 652, is definitely something that is very important. It needs to be reintroduced because Governor Roy Cooper has vetoed this bill. So let's get to where we're at currently, 7-8-2020. Uh, uh, the House, let me go over to the, the website here. Uh, if you go to NC leg.gov so that stands for nclegislation.gov that is the North Carolina General Assembly website General Assembly website and if you just type in HB 652 you'll come up with it but on the 8 uh, the order of business was uh, a veto override and so we initially had let's look at the votes here where it passed in the House, and it went to the Senate, and the Senate heard it, and it passed in the Senate. But that's when Governor Cooper put his veto stamp on it and used the language saying that, you know, in the context that it would allow guns on school property, quote-unquote, therefore it would threaten the life, uh, or threaten the safety, excuse me, uh, of the students and the teachers, therefore I veto the bill, which contextually has nothing to do with private or like I said community colleges it only dealt with religious uh, religious places of worship or, or churches and my personal opinion is I believe that every church should be afforded every church should be afforded or at least have the opportunity or at least have the right or the power to say I do want concealed carry at this place of worship or I do not want. I believe that should be up to the pastor and I believe that should be up to the congregation. So let us know. You can leave us a voice memo here on the Anchor Podcast and uh, shortly, once we get a few more episodes, it will distribute out. That's the good thing about the Anchor Podcast. Yes, we do have a sponsorship, and yes, Anchor sponsors this uh, podcast. But we're not just saying it because they do sponsor this podcast. Honestly, it is a great free way to start your podcast. And uh, they've got great tools. I am actually using the software right now on the iPad. And I'm using the Audio-Technica uh, ATR2100 USB microphone into my iPad to record this episode and it would not be possible without Anchor. I would have to have so much software, and I would have to have a big, bulky computer. But this way, if I'm in California like I am now, or no matter where I'm at in the United States of America, I can pull out my iPad, I can pull out my microphone, and I can record the podcast uh, how we need it. So if y'all ever thought about starting a podcast at all, check out Anchor. But uh, anyway shameless plug i know and but we'll get back to it but anyhow like i said i believe that every church should have that right individually as uh, a church uh you know or a religious uh, religious establishment 
that says, okay, we personally don't want to have firearms in our sanctuary. Uh, you know, hey, if that's their view, that's that's fine. But that should be the choice of the pastor or the ones that's in the leader positions, not the hands of the governor or the government. That's 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 the point here. It is a far, far overreach on the General Assembly's uh, behalf to allow, uh, and I know why. I know why it happened. You know, we all know. I mean, there's no use to act like we don't know what happened. We all know what happened, <laughs> and it was because of uh, you know the Democrats. But okay, so here is the original vote, and we needed, and it really was dictated by three votes yes you heard that right folks three flip-flop votes if three individuals would have stood up and they would have held their head high and 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 actually voted their conscience and voted for what was right well we wouldn't have to be talking about the veto odor right or the fact that it failed but anyhow, I think you can see my opinion and how I express myself on that. But the original votes was 67 to 47. So that was 67 eyes, which was mainly, I mean, except for the absentees, the entire Republican Party. And there was even uh, some of them around 12, I believe it was, was actually Democrats. Three of them Democrats was what made the difference between the veto override either passing or failing, because we got to keep in mind this was not just the introduced and and the and whether it failed or not. It, it's not that it failed originally. It was passed in the House and sent to the Senate, and passed and sent to Governor Cooper's office to be signed into law when he vetoed this bill. So that's what we got to understand, the context. And he only, I mean, one little tiny sentence that is not even contextually accurate. Basically, his veto statement is a lie. It is an outright dirty lie. I don't know how else to say it. Okay, and now, now look at this right here. Okay, so the total votes is 114 on the original vote uh, before it got vetoed when it was originally passed in the House, 114. So, are you ready? You're not going to like this too good. So check this out. So six absentee ballots, 114 voted again. These numbers are crazy. On the I-66, on the nose, 48. There were three deciding votes. Three deciding votes. Yes, we lost. And how did we lose? We lost by one actual, if you want to be technical, the technical on it is one Democrat voted no this time. Whereas the same Democrat last time voted yes. But really, it come down to three of the key Democrats voting yes that flip-flopped and three voted no to where, on the last go-around, they voted yes. So, by one little vote, it failed. And this happened on 7-18-2020 at uh, 2.33 p.m. So, the veto override failed. What we need to do is we don't need to. We actually started a petition. Uh, several has signed it. It's over on change.org, and of course it's uh, it's it's labeled under the bill. Um, it's the uh, Second Amendment uh, Protection Act of 2020 dash um, freedom to worship safely. Um, so you can look that up at change.org. If you sign it, it, it will give us when hopefully we're praying that Dan Forrest will be able to get in there and that the Republican can get the House back and get the governorship back and and you know any empty seats we're, 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 we're looking to get Republican uh, <laughs> in more places than not okay because we're getting to a point now that nonsense law 
I mean, you got these left people over here that don't even know how to so much call. Uh, you know, I know, yes, this is a political, so if you don't want to hear anything about political or politics, I'm not a major politician or or, or anything like that. I'm not involved in, in politics as far as anything like that. But, uh, you know, uh, I'm just enough involved to say, listen, we need to get involved more, if nothing else, to know what's going on. But we cannot have a voice if we don't know what's going on, people. We need to wake up. I mean, you know, and you say, well, Brother Kevin, you know, uh, I just ain't into politics. I get it. I have been there. I've never really been into politics myself, just to be quite honest. You know, I'm a preacher. Uh, um, you know, I've got I've got ministry things to do and, and, and all this. I don't have a whole lot of time to dedicate to keeping up with all the political, you know, happenings, but there again i also cannot afford to lose my second amendment right as a citizen of the united states and if it takes my voice whether it takes uh you know doing this podcast or it takes doing a website or it takes doing a facebook and 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 making that concerted effort to make a difference you know it's worth it and the reason why is is because listen we have it still reads the same it's just like the bible it still it still reads the exact same uh, you know, then as it does now, the language is still the same, and uh, you know, all the way back in the 1700s, our founding fathers, they said this. They said that it's self-evident that, that we have what certain unalienable rights that we're endowed by who our Creator. That's God, and. I believe that the second amendment, not just the second, but the first amendment, but how can we protect the other amendments if we have no way to effect or, uh, to effectively defend ourselves? In essence, if you do not have a way to defend yourself, you do not have a way to uh, uh, defend life and liberty. You do not have a way to defend your first amendment or your third, fourth, and the list goes all the way down to the 14th, 15th Amendment of the uh, Constitution of the state of North Carolina. You see, if you give up one place freely and willfully, give an inch, they will take a mile. If you willingly say, okay, I'm going to compromise on this aspect of the Second Amendment so they will not attack or so they will not try to take away this other part of the Second Amendment, I mean, hey, you can kid yourself all you want to, but I'm going to tell you something. If you compromise at all, whatsoever, I'm telling you, my friend, if you do, you have not lost a little bit, but you have lost the very right. Because a right is not a right unless it is intact. Intact. What we have today in America in the year of 2020 is a severely compromised what second amendment a lot of people don't even don't even know what the second amendment they can't even quote you little test look at the people in your family look at them and ask them what do you do, can you recite the second amendment it is scary how many people does not know what the second amendment says it says a well regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Now that's me reciting it. I didn't have it in front of me. That's just me reciting my right. And I will never, never give up my individual right. Yes, they may take it away. And I'll say it just like I do about the Word of God. They may take my bible they may take my second amendment but there's two things they'll never do they'll never take jesus out of my heart or they'll never take my firearm and the reason why is is because i will never ever freely give it up and the reason why is is you have to live free or die that's there's no exception around that 
this is not a radical podcast. This is not a podcast that that's saying, "Hey, we need to we need to uh, start some type of uprising." That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is we need to stand and we need to stand tall for what our forefathers and the path that they paved. We need to stay on the path because any time that you divert or you stray off the path, you will lose sight of that path. Therefore, you're not on the path any longer. So we cannot, we've got to say, not only as United States citizens, but as Christians. You know, when we're talking about spiritual aspects and we're talking about, uh, you know, the Apostle Paul, you know, he said, I fought a good fight. We are in a spiritual battle. We're not just in a spiritual battle concerning religious matters. We are in a spiritual battle concerning the very right to protect ourselves, the right to protect our wife and our children, what God has set us over. We are the man. We are the one that makes the provision. God expects us to defend and to perfect and to protect not only our wife and our children, but our friends and our family. And while we're at church, since we're getting on this, you know, the H Bill 652, God expects us to protect and to defend our brothers and sisters in Christ. I believe, as the podcast draws to a close here on this first episode, I believe what we need to do is prayerfully be in prayer about the Second Amendment and, and asking God to put a hedge around the Second Amendment and, put, and, and help the ones that's in leadership to realize that this is something that they cannot grant, but it was granted by God. And that they need to realize when it, uh, concerning this Bill 652 that all churches, no matter how big or how small, what their name is or what their denomination is, they should have the fundamental constitutionally protected right of the Second Amendment. We thank you for tuning in today. And uh, you can contact us by simply sending us an email at Christian the number two N D amendment at gmail dot com. Or you can find us on Facebook. Just look up uh, Christian two A and you can send us a message there. So we really truly wanna uh, thank you and we appreciate you tuning in today. You know, share the podcast and if you or someone else that you know would like to be a guest on the podcast, you can either leave us a, a voice memo or a voice message here through the Anchor Podcast platform, or you can use one of the other contact uh, methods that we just previously stated there. So we sure appreciate it. And remember, you have to. it's not about where you're aiming. It's about where you're going. So it's about the big picture. It's not about... Uh, it, it, it's, it's bigger than one bill. It's bigger than one shot. It's about the ultimate goal, and it's about the bigger picture. And today, if you don't know him, let me tell you this. Our greatest friend is the Lord Jesus Christ. He died on the cross for you. And just as Jesus died on the cross for you to save you, men bled and died in this country to give you the right of the Second Amendment. It didn't come free, folks. But guess what? We need to stand firm and say, you will not take this right from me. Well, we thank you, and until next time, this is your host, Kevin Thompson.